Oh yeah, step sides, fender flares, daggum truck cap, new tires, bumper in the front, oh man. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and the adventure wagon. We are closing the door on it today. We're here at Marid Chevrolet and 80 West Customs, where we are going to get customized. So I'm leaving this with them for a few days. And if you look at the truck that's parked right next to me here, this is a this is a little little more pop than what we're gonna do, but it'll just kind of give you an example of uh, what we're doing here. We're doing fender flares. We're doing a lift. Um, this has 35s. We're not going that big. We're gonna go with some 33s on there, but just enough, you know, just enough to keep that little little bugger off the ground, so we're not getting in a big ditch and bumping the daggum little ball back there. And it just wouldn't be the adventure wagon without the wagon part. So this is going to be covered back here with the cap. And then we're going to be adding some more stuff throughout um, throughout the spring. And by the fall, when it's the next hunting season, she's going to be rigged and ready. So I'm excited to see what it's going to look like right after. But this is the last time we're going to see it as the plain Jane model. So take it in right now. Fast forward 24 hours and ladies and gentlemen, we have snow in Texas. It has been one of the weirdest uh, 24 hours of weather I've ever seen. I went ahead and dropped my truck off for them to get started. They gave me this truck, which is pretty much the same, except it's two wheel drive, doesn't have the diesel. It's a Silverado, you know, and then a tornado of crazy weather started happening. It was just 70, like 75 degrees, raining and then these crazy storms started moving in and I wanted to get started on fencing in the top portion of the chicken coop so I was going to do that while the the truck was getting ready and then I come outside this morning and it's snow on the ground and the temperature has dropped obviously uh, into the 30s so I'm definitely not heading out on the water today to do any sort of dangling I am gonna to get to work on the chicken coop now that it's not actually raining, it is snowing. This is so weird because this is actually why I need the four wheel drive. So, I don't know, maybe it's a sign. So I'm gonna grab a hot cup of Joe and get to work on the chicken coop. Look at those snowflakes and a hot cup of coffee. You just don't see that in Texas every day. OSG got me fueled up with that good good so I can fuel up and finish that chicken coop out there. Okay, I'm fueled up, ready to go, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This is pretty daggum intense right here. Normally when uh, we say it's gonna snow in Texas, that means like a slight little flurry. Um, I'm hearing crunch on the feet here. That is rare, extremely rare. It's not gonna stop me from getting out here today and completing a job that I continually need to work on so that we can get chickens in here at least by the spring, but I think I'm gonna try to get them in here in like February. Look at this, Are you kidding me? My goodness. It's not stopping the airplanes from flying today. So what we're gonna do is take this wire right here that's already on the lower part of the fence and we're gonna strap it, not strap it, we're gonna staple it. I've got a pneumatic stapler and we're gonna go all around the top here and that's gonna give us about six foot of fencing. Just look at that little homestead right there though. Rackley Roost, Dagum Treehouse. We don't have a chimney though, that's really unfortunate. We are still in Texas by the way. I haven't traveled to North Dakota. Okay, so far I have a couple of panels put up and I'm using this four foot tall, uh, it's 50 feet long, uh, it's just green plastic coated fencing. It's held up pretty good so so far. The, the bottom that I've put on here that's been up probably seven or eight months, uh, it's done pretty well. And what I'm gonna do for the top half, I had a little bit of scrap left over. I cut it in half so it's about two foot. 
worked out perfectly. So now I've got, instead of 50 feet, I've got 100 feet of this stuff. And I think I got it for like 50 bucks. And I'm just gonna wrap the entire thing. Just go from big post to big post uh, and take the pneumatic stapler and just staple all over. The first couple of panels turned out really good. Stuff is really hard to work with, but once you get it up, it's pretty sturdy. Like I could probably put, you know, dog or some goats or something in there. It, it would contain a lot. It's not just regular chicken wire. And the thing that makes it really fast is using uh, this pneumatic stapler. I'm just using little, little tiny staples. I was, I wasn't sure about them at first if they would hold up, but they've held up for about eight months now on this. A little bit of rust. But, uh, and I'm, I'm probably gonna have to go back in you know a few years and redo it, but uh, it seems to be working really good. Those are just uh, little 3 eighths, 3 eighths uh, inch staples. So let's lock and load, keep going. the snow is starting to melt off we're waiting on an update on the truck to go get it uh, but in the meantime we have gotten about half of the fencing done here it's not looking too shabby honestly the stain on this thing solid move so I'm gonna complete the rest of this okay well, I think phase one as I called it is complete this is uh, raising up the coop, staining it, and then fencing it in. So we just completed all of that. Look at this corner back here. This is the infamous corner where the fox got in, and it is higher than my face. So it's got to go over that. Then this will be electrified on the outside. We're going to run just one wire, and that's going to be a project for another day. But I'm excited to have this part done. I think, honestly, uh, we could go ahead and get some chickens in here, and I think they would be okay uh, for a time until the fox has figured out some way to, to get over the top of that. But we're going to fortify it even more so the chickens could be safe. And the snow is basically all gone now. It's like it never even happened. Look at that. This was literally white. All white here this morning. All gone now. We're about to get that adventure wagon back, y'all! It's done been fixed up so taking a pause on the chicken coop because of all that crazy ice and snow we had my truck work got a little delayed so it got delayed by a day what a day a difference makes in Texas my gosh it's uh, in the 60s maybe even 70s just coming off of snow it's incredible I just got the call said trucks ready come get it and it looks good back it on up to the new adventure wagon. Oh yeah. We're here. We're about to park right next to it, y'all. It's looking like sexual chocolate. Oh, just take you a gander. Just take you a gander at those upgrades right there. Ooh Look at that beef up front, y'all. It is ready to smash a deer. Just not on the side, just right there in the center. Just in case. Got those BFG ATs. The KO2's on there. Um, we now have our step sides, so we get up to the top. Well, let, let's just get this thing back to the crib and uh, take a closer look. Man, look at the straw. Shoo! Oh, we got some fighter jets flying over today. Something's happening. Bin Laden doesn't be dead for a while. Get this baby back home. Maybe take it out for a little test drive in some dirt and see how it does man this is whoo sucker looks good i tell you what everybody on the lot was walking by and like man look at this thing okay well looks like we got a problem with the old chevy service emissions 174 miles until 
Yeah, service emissions manual, sea owner's manual. We are herky-jerky in here. Can't really give it any gas. Oh, yeah. Feels like the transmission's about to rip out. This is no bueno. So, fast forward 24 hours, and we are back in the driveway. I swear, my nickname should be Murphy. My next dog will probably be named Murphy, because whatever can and will happen, happens to me. I'm going to share all these upgrades here in just a second, but I just got to explain what happened. So, I was driving back from the dealership. I was like a mile away from the house. Thank you, Lord. And the sensor started going off. The transmission was like skipping. It was it was not good. It was a bad deal. Marit Chevy got a tow truck, came out here, get, delivered me another truck, took this one back, and they had three techs working on it today, uh, and they figured out there was a wiring short. So, like, one of the wires was shorting out. I feel like the ghost of my old truck was, like, calling at me, like, hey, man, Toyota, I might be a little scrappy on the inside, might be a little drab, don't have the accoutrement, but daggum, I get up and run down the road every time. I would let y'all light up the comments on who's got the best truck right now, but let's just look at my truck specifically and the stuff that they did and what is looking extra tasty. So if y'all seen the new Chevy Trail Boss, this is kind of the same deal. I believe they put the Trail Boss uh, lift on this. Um, they have a leveling kit from Chevy, which is just a two inch, and it basically makes that level um, from front and back. But since I do a lot of towing, they went ahead and did the the three and a half, I believe it's three and a half, in the back here. And so I've got a, uh, a rake, a factory kept rake, which will be good for towing when, when we hook up back there. Keep it nice and level. You always want your truck, if you're towing, to be good and level. It's good for braking. It's good for aerodynamics, balance of the truck, and everything like that. Fender flares hit you pretty hard right here. I mean, these are some big brows right here. I mean, my gosh, that really opens opens up the truck. When you look at them from the side, they're... They stick out quite a bit. They're very aggressive. And at first I was like, man, these tires, these tires, these 295s, they, you know, that's the same truck I had, a, or same tire I had on my Tundra, that they just don't seem very wide. They're not sticking out very far with the, the Flinder Flare. Um, but then I got to looking, and these are actually 33 by 12 and a halfs. So they're a little bit wider than my old tire. They ride tremendous. I, I mean, this is like third or fourth set of these. Um, all terrains I've had and they are really really good I love these tires but these are 33 12 and a half so these are the same size as I had on my first car ever which was a three and a half inch lifted Jeep Wrangler 93 YJ and I had uh, 33 by 1250s on there so they look really good well balanced um, honestly you could probably even bump up the tire size another notch there's so much clearance but i really don't want to do that I, I think it it's pretty good the way it is uh it leaves a lot of room for going in ditches and uh you know those colorado moments or those steep boat ramp moments that aren't really boat ramps or just kind of ditches into uh, little lakes that you want to get into the fender flares if y'all are wondering i'm pretty sure they're made by rough country i looked around at a bunch and i thought they they looked the best um, the other ones just, they didn't have the same pop, so these look really good. They came blank, they painted them, matches the truck perfect. Then we go over here to the old step ruse. I was already finding that the truck was like surprisingly pretty high without even having the lift on it. So now it's really nice getting in and out. And, you know, what I do at boat ramps, I do a lot of the shimmies. I get right here, and then I'm like moving beyond I, I went kind of cheap and I didn't buy the full extended version that had one right here. Now I'm wishing I did because I would I would totally use that. Grab on right there, go to the roof rack, and then go to your boat. Just packed it up so we could take a look at the main attraction here. What really makes this uh, my off-road office literally one of the reasons i've had white trucks is because it is so easy to get uh caps for trucks uh quickly um, they're, re they're readily available in white because that's the color they come in so I, I mean i like white in general but 
um, it's really easy to get truck caps in white. And it just so happened that uh, DFW Camper, who also did my dad's uh, camper, they did this one as well. Um, they did a great job, and they had this one in stock already. So, done. They installed it. It's flush. It looks really really good y'all um and I'm, i don't even know what model this is to be honest with you i think it's one of their their nice ones but um you can get them customized whatever kind of like sliding glass you want lift like you can totally customize caps this one happens to be made by are my last one was a leer but inside of here i'm probably the only person on the planet that has an are cap and a leer locker you know just a they got both brands on here, um, and this this still works, y'all. They they took this off my old truck. This is what 80 West Customs did. They they took it off the old truck and they installed it in this one. So that saved me a ton of money. So let's take a gander on the inside with some lights on here. Ooh, listen to the echo. Listen to the echo because there's no carpet in here. Um, Got a little lights, you know, got some lights in here. Um, this was carpeted on my last one. It's it's not on this one, but honestly, I got I got a lot of stuff like hung up in that and bugs like to get in it. So uh, it's all good. I'm not mad at it. I could actually sleep back there, but I have other plans for sleeping situations. This is going to be for all the dangle supply, camping supply, all that good stuff. And uh, can't tell you how much I love having that instead of having a storage system on the bottom because I still haul stuff in this, you know? I mean, this, this is like, this is the truck I use to work on the house too. So I'm, I'm constantly putting stuff down in here, wood, you know, rocks, dirt, whatever, supplies for the, for the crib. Um, but it just came out really well. Um, I'm really happy the way they mounted it. It's super solid. This is now an adventure truck for me now. With that, that is a huge part of it. Lastly, y'all, we have a, a lighted bumper. It is up, I gotta reach down here in the switch, but boom! Woods are just being lit up right now, look at that. So this is just a little bumper I wanted to add just in case I needed to push over a gate or, you know, need to smoke a deer uh, out in the woods, but really doesn't save me from over here, which is most likely where you hit them. But anyway, uh, it came with a light it honestly wasn't it wasn't that expensive either and it has a, uh, a a little skid plate that goes down there it's a mix of that um you know aluminum or nickel plated metal whatever and then just a uh the black bar there and i could actually mount more stuff to this if i wanted to like some more lights something like that uh you know maybe even hold a couple dangle poles across here i don't know yeah that'd probably be dumb but anyway it looks mean it looks good it serves a purpose and i like it a lot okie dokie y'all that is going to do it uh for the the tour the current tour um couple of more things to be added one major one is going to be the rack uh the rack is really important i've been looking at a bunch of those uh, I'm going to go with a different style than I did last time with just the bars. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing a, uh, a full like flat rack on top that could be customized to, to put anything up there. You can put you know water, uh, diesel, put your fishing poles, kayak, whatever you want to do um, and kind of take it on and off and customize it for the adventure that you're going on at the time. Wish the new <laughs> adventure wagon some luck and hit the thumbs up y'all. Lord knows we could use all the luck we could get over here. And I can't wait to get these tires, buddy, take this baby out on its next adventure. So, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, God bless you, and I will see you on the next one.